Welcome to the Best Hour of Their Day podcast with your hosts, Jason Fernandez and me, Jason Ackerman. With more than 20 years in the business, as both coaches and affiliate owners, our passion is to help create world-class affiliates and coaches by building better boxes. Welcome to the best hour of your day. All right, guys, welcome back. Best hour of their day. Fern, here's the thing. Here's the thing. A lot of people's contentions with CrossFit is this. Oh, ready? I'm I'm intrigued. I know we haven't talked about this. I wanted to surprise you. I want to see how fast you are on your feet, how nimble you are. Well, I was a point guard, so probably pretty good. Okay, here we go. Basketball talk already. Let's. <laughs> no, we're talking hockey. It, people <laughs> misunderstand. Is, is it misunderstand or lack understanding or de understand? Uh, the, definitely, definitely not the last one. Definitely not the latter two. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, it's so lack of understanding is fair. There is a lack of understanding, or they misunder. You could say, mi- you, typically, you would use the term misunderstood. Misunderstood. Uh, yeah, but that's past tense it is past tense but if they did misunderstand it in the past then it would in fact be past tense so if they, if they misunderstand in the past but still currently misunderstand it well then they're st- stupid stupid okay <laughs> yeah there's some stupid people out there for and oh, they don't under this is not a contentious topic at all that is fact <laughs> they don't understand the sport of crossfit this actually i just misspoke the sport of fitness mm-hmm is not CrossFit. And my I want to talk about on this episode in particular, the benefits of the fact that CrossFit has a competitive component to it, not the games, the daily, right. the daily grind at the box. Correct. So let's, you know, I, I will say this, and I think Coach Glassman understood this better than most. There, there, there was a blur there. And I think for all the things he was doing when he got rid of media and he was making those changes to the games you know, like years and years ago, a lot of it was he was trying to reconcile this idea that there, there, was, a, there was a blur and we didn't want to focus on the Frasers and Tias and Maderos of the world. Coach Glassman was always about, I want to help people get healthier. I want to go against you know Big Pharma and all that. So I think a lot of what he was doing that angered people was trying to bring back the games. Do you let's start there. Do you agree or disagree with that? No, I agree with all of it. I think it was, um, you know, hindsight's 2020 and it's clearly just my opinion, but I I think it was mismanaged slash misguided, if you will, the execution of that thought. I don't, I don't think you had to throw the baby out with the bathwater. I think it was actually not a great idea. They, They both can and should coexist in harmony. Yeah. And I think that was more just like coach Glassman's method, right? Let's burn the shit down versus like, let's, uh, let's yeah. think about it. Let's, you know, so <laughs> he's not a man of compromise. I don't think that's yeah, how most people would describe him. Yeah. And, you know, and for the record at the time, his company do what you want with it. Right. And like, if Listen, you're going to, I'm not, I'm not debating his uh, authority to do so. I'm just, I'm more again, suggesting the outcome was, uh, not ideal. Yeah, yeah. detrimental. But but overall, I, but I think to the overall growth and 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 community of CrossFit, I think it was detrimental. You know, and I think he understood that. And and for the record, I believe Castro understands that as well. I mean, look at Castro's. I mean, to this day, no longer employed by CrossFit, he showed up at your box yesterday. I, I this is, I don't think anybody understands that more intimately than Dave does. As I mean, as, as as well as much as he is as much as he is the CrossFit games, I don't think anybody truly understands it gives Dave's Dave credit for his understanding of what CrossFit truly is. What happened at the games last year? Remember we had that, we had that initial meeting like we do every year for the judges. Mm -hmm. Dave walks in. First thing he says, damn, I miss you guys. I miss EDU. Yeah. Right. You know, the guys running the the CrossFit games, and he's upset that he's not hanging out with us 30 jokesters, you know, like because because that's how he came up in this you know, company. I mean, he was here. He was in Virginia Beach for one day for an event and dropped into three or four gyms. He dropped at yours. He day. dropped into Steph's box. Um, he went to Dropbox. He came here, Dropbox and stability. And, and he was he was not even here for a full day. 
Yeah. And I mean, you go on his Instagram. And he does that everywhere. Yeah. Other than killing animals, he's basically stopping at affiliates. Right. So that was for you, Katie. Katie, what's your stance on hunting? You good with it? I'm fine with it. Yeah. What about dogs? You hunt dogs? No. God. Okay. So you don't, so you draw <laughs> the line. Who so you have a line. Dogs? <laughs> you draw the line yeah. somewhere. Yeah. Who hunts dogs? Yeah. Why would you hunt? Um, you can hunt with look, dogs. But let's not get canceled. Dogs. But I'm sure there's people that hunt dogs, friend. I don't know that there are. I mean, maybe anyway, wild dogs, but anyway, anyway, Katie, how about that video? Of that dog, <laughs> there's a pack up, of like wild that. dogs. Disseminating- <laughs> I almost didn't send you the one of the dog throwing up, Katie. Yeah, it was a little gross, but it's okay. <laughs> that was a little gross, but it was funny, right? <laughs> it was funny. <laughs> That's because I've been there. You take your dog to the beach and it drinks like all the salt water and then throws up in the car. So, anyway, um, Ca- Castro understood that. I mean, also, one of his shirts that we got, you know, every year at the end of the games, we get a coin. He mm-hmm. typically gives us some sort of like Castro. Oh, uh, yeah. It's a, well, you got a couple there, but he gives well, these you are, like, these are some of those are like games, competitor coins and two judges coins, but his coin is on the other one. Yeah. But he, but he gives us usually a t-shirt as well. And one year the t-shirt was support your local box. Right there. It's, oh, it's hanging on your wall right, right there. there. Boom. I can't see because you're such a shitty camera. I couldn't tell what that it looked like a vent. I thought it was literally just a vent. Actually, the effect of this camera is a very good. It's supposed to be blurred in the background, as is your misspelled gratitude sign on the background of I yours. Spell that. That's spelled yeah. correctly. Anyway, uh, that's TJ oh, Art. Is. We'll give a shout out to Todd yeah. Acuto, who yeah. was just texting us. TJ yeah. Art, check him out on Instagram. Can't spell. Um, um, so anyway, <laughs> so anyway, the point being, I, I think there's a there's a misunderstanding there, and they're you know. It, that, that's a double edged sword. Many people are joining affiliates because of the games. They see it on TV and they're like, I want to try that. And they they understand that's the pros. Just like I met, I talk about all the time. I watch almost every UFC event and then I show up at jujitsu and fight girls. Right. Like I get it. Like I'm not in the UFC. You're not at the CrossFit games, but Why we can still practice. No, no, no. No, no, that's the good part. The bad part is there's probably some intimidation. There's some people that are like, oh, I want to work out, but I can't do CrossFit because they're doing X, Y, Z. There's some people. We got to be honest with ourselves. There's got to be people thinking that. You just. I No, th- listen, it is. But my this has always been my stance is what are you doing about it? If people are intimidated, if you do nothing to combat that idea of intimidation. The, the you know, issue like if, is if we pull if we pull some of the old videos of David Osorio with uh, his client, uh, I forgot what her name is. What's the older? She's like really old. There's a I want to say Candace, but I think I'm just yeah, thinking of an I old person it, name. Yeah, <laughs> Doris uh, was it Dorothy? <laughs> no, I don't know. I, I don't remember. But there's it's a really cool video. Galinda is it Galinda? S- something? No, it's definitely not Galinda. But the uh, but uh, nobody's in, nobody is intimidated by that. And, and here's the ultimate problem, which is. And, and I think it's just a lack of awareness, right? So the, the CrossFit, the games were born out of CrossFit because of this idea of adding some degree of competitive component to CrossFit, not even necessarily f- against other people, but with oneself, combined with the idea of overall work capacity naturally morphed into the sport, it was just it it was just inevitable based on the way it was designed which is not well, a bad thing which is not a bad thing by the way because it completely redefined the way we think about and we view human capacity nobody thought about human capacity the way that they did that they do now prior to crossfit it was not a thing that you could think you would have somebody be able to snatch 275 back squat 500 run a 5 minute mile and do 25 muscle ups all, it, all combined in the same human being. Like that was not a thing, right? And mm-hmm. in, in the pursuit of that, in the pursuit of that, to, to suggest that there would be no missteps is silly. It just is, okay? And if people want to hate on it, that's fine. So all of that to say that the, the sport being grown out of that then gave CrossFit a larger microphone, at which point, great, it creates better Certainly. awareness, creates better awareness. However, where affiliate should be focused is what can you be doing to tell the other side of the story? Yes, the games is an expression of CrossFit. It's amazing to watch. Like watching human beings do anything, any feat of human capacity, whether it's powerlifting, you know, run a sub four minute mile, like all the marathon, it's, it's in, whatever. marathon, it's incredible. But watching 
people overcome chronic disease and sedentarism is also awesome. And our word, job is that a word, is a, Katie? Can you look that up, please? Uh, I believe it is actually. The, uh, yeah. Katie's yeah. The, Google it, Katie. Yep. <laughs> she I doesn't know how to spell it because you made it I'm up. Gonna, I'm gonna I'm, <laughs> Jay's gonna pay me in Bitcoin when that turns out to be a real word. Hey, Bitcoin's the, on the way back up, baby. But that is our resp- go ahead and hit, hit up, Katie. What do you got, Katie? It's a word. Oh damn it. <laughs> how do you say it? It I, sedentarism sedentarism yeah i've never heard that word but it's the term refers to the many of the activities commonly associated with the word sedentary so. but for okay good fair and smart let me but let me interrupt you for a second we'll go back again go back no, no, no. rewind 15 um, seconds back like, friends smart so i i do before you go on i want to say that i want to talk briefly about that but i want to go somewhere else with this but i and i agree with you we need to combat that um it's not I've, combat, right? This is this is the this is this is this is kind of my rub with the. They are not at odds. I agree. I mean, look, we're obviously in agreement on this. They're not at odds, but we can't be naive to think there aren't people out there that we don't know of, right? If they step foot, if they show up at Rife, if they show up at Best Hour CrossFit, if they show up at Dunwoody, right? It's our responsibility to show them that difference. Like, hey, I saw the games. I'm interested, but I'm intimidated. Cool. Let me show you what CrossFit really is. But there are going to be people that see that and just are intimidated. I can never do that. Like we have to be honest with ourselves. There are those people. Yeah, but th- this is this is all under the the false assumption that that is CrossFit's fault. It, oh, I know. I don't blame CrossFit at all. I'm just saying. Or the games. And 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 for that record, that, I think those there are people, people. Those people were going to have a hard do a hard time doing anything. That right. I was going to say. There are people that watch UFC that are probably like, I can't do that. Where meanwhile, there's and nor should you go like decide no, to but, get punched in the face. But there are white belts that show up every day that are like, cool, I love the UFC. I just want to get better and do this as a hobby. Um, and then there are always the delusional people that are like, I saw the UFC. I'm in training now. I'm like, dude, you're you're 30 years old. You're not going to the UFC. Right. I just choked you. Like, let's let's be let's let's set some realistic goals. Just like back in the day when people would show up and be like, I want to go to the CrossFit Games. And you'd have to be like, Cool. Simmer down. Let's figure this out. However, my my point that I want to make is the value of the competitive side of CrossFit inside the affiliate, right? So a lot of people are like, oh, you know, the competitive part inside is bad because people get hurt and people are doing things they shouldn't be doing and all these other things. I take the opposite stance and I think that's the best part about it. That's why I go to an affiliate because I want to challenge myself to see what other people are doing, check the leaderboard, push myself. And I think too many people think that's a bad thing. That's a great thing. That's, I mean, you and I, Fern, we, you, I guarantee back in when you were a teenager, Katie probably as well, like on the track team, when you were a teenager and you went to the gym with your buddies, were you not trying to lift one more rep on the bench than them or put on fives or like throw, drop the pin down on a machine? It's always yeah, as we long as there's 21s an, and I was like, you know, what? let's do 22s. Like, yeah, but what, as long as there's an opportunity to, to compete, people will compete. So let's take advantage of that. Not look at it as one of the downfalls. Look at it as one of the advantages of CrossFit. No, I, I, it's 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 almost inseparable from the idea of intensity. Like you wouldn't have that level of intensity without some component of competition. Like it but, just wouldn't it would not exist. And, and to that point, that, that's part of the that's part of the argument. The argument is like people are going to get intensity when they don't need to or shouldn't. Yes. Ultimately, at the end of the day, you need to be your own governor. You need to like why? And it's still going back to like, why is that bad? Like, why is somebody so fucking afraid of that? It's, uh, it, I think it's I think it's look, I, I, I've been doing a lot of thinking about this um, because we're you and I and even Katie and many of our listeners are not the average members of the gym. We're educated. I, I show up at a gym. I show up at the workout. I, I know what I should be doing. I know how long it should be taking, et cetera. Um, so for me, it's like, okay. I, or, or I also know I'm feeling this pain or not, you know, not pain, but soreness. I need to scale this or that where some people don't, some people are truly at the, um, at their coaches, you know, the, the ability of their coach to know what to do. I, th- I think there is, are some people out there. In other words, you know, um, but, but again, so I, I'll stop you there. Like, again, this is a, this is a lack of ownership and a lack of accountability. And I know people don't like to hear this, but it, it, it on who? is on the coach. 
Right. right. So I think, this idea that people could just correct. come in and move like a bag of trash and I can't do anything about it, it that conversation needs to be squashed. Now, there, it, does, it does raise questions. Why are we incapable of managing that situation? That could be any number of things. Complete lack of experience, uh, lack of uh, skill sets, poor planning, any of those things. But here's the deal. This goes back to the old saying, either you're stupid or you don't give a shit, right? I can only help you with one. I've not met a Dude, ton There's of- a famous uh, Papa Fern quote over there, right? But yeah, it is. So, but the point is this, I've, ne- I've met- Are you going to put that in no- your book as like your father's quote or are you- I mean, it's, kind of, it's kind of how I live my life. You're either stupid or you don't give a shit and I can only help you with one. I've, you've said that to me numerous times. I got to yeah, be honest. I've, yeah, and all of them are- And I'm not sure what the answer is yet. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I can it. tell you. Yeah, yeah, you're stupid. Um <laughs> The but the point but the point is this is like in the in the the whole premise of that idea is we we typically don't in in the CrossFit world are not running across hordes of people that don't care right like that's just not the case and the and the purpose of that statement is well if you fall in the stupid category that can be fixed it can be fixed I can just teach you some things you and I do it every weekend at the level ones and the level twos and with coachings with coaches in the affiliate that's easy man and that's my point is that it's just a lack of ownership and understanding that like well I've got this athlete and I'm like well what are we doing about it like the, you we're we're not recognizing that like hey this idea of intensity is a great thing we don't need to throw it out you just need to learn how to put reins on it and control it and it's yeah it is challenging. But this was this is not intended to be easy, by the way. Like cr- being a great CrossFit coach is not for everybody. I- I'm just I'm sorry. It's not. not. You have to be a jack of many trades with regard to just human movement in general. And you have to be a psychologist. An emotional intelligence. Yeah, exactly. right. You have to have a super high IQ. And that is hard. And that is that is what is so intriguing to me about this profession, quite frankly, is because it is so challenging is the reason that I pursued it. Well, right? I think that is why there's, if there's it was multiple... easy. I would not do it. I'd be like, this is stupid. All right, Jimmy Dugan, a league of their own over there, Katie. Um, I, I think there's a there's a few different angles to approach that. I do believe most people's contention with CrossFit comes down to the comes down to the coaches. Right. Everything that they have problems with with, with CrossFit would be irrelevant if coaches really, really tried to get better. Right. Like if the if every coach out there took their level three and passed, right? Or, or just even moved in that direction, to be quite honest, you would see a difference. Because to me, that just, if you sign up to take your level three, pass or fail, that shows you're, you're committed to this thing. So I think, yes, there, the, the, most, of, most of the contentions are, you know, intensity is this, people need that. Like, yeah, we need better coaches out there. And, they're, and it's moving in that direction, I think. You know, it, it is a challenge. You're absolutely right. There are a lot of part-time CrossFit coaches out there that coach two, four hours a week, and I don't want them to stop because they love it. Most of those people are doing you can it. You be really good and coach three to four hours a week, by the way. Absolutely. And more importantly, like, I, I don't want to tell you not to do something you, you're passionate about. And co- You work 40 hours a week, and you want to show up in my box and coach two, three, four classes a week, whether it's for free or for 25 bucks an hour, by all means. The, the challenge is those people are probably not developing at the same pace as the full timers out there. Do we agree with that? Yeah, I don't know anybody that would disagree with that. Right. So so you're right. A lot of the problems are going to be solved with coaching. But even bigger than that, I think the I, idea well, I really I really want to go back and I want to hammer this because this is the, the this uh, this. It's this is the boogeyman. This is the same. Okay, go ahead. Man. Hammer. This, make yourself feel good. This, go ahead. This is this is the same boogeyman as the shitty box. Right, I'd be like this. This intensity is bad, and it's bad for people. Based on what? Right. If we were going to uh, well, go with the old, it... like, the, I mean, that's your you're you're stating that that is the contention. No, 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 no. Maybe I'm not speaking. I don't think. Well, first of all, I'm speaking what other people are saying. You know, I don't feel that way. But no, but that's my point. Is like yeah, it's yeah. a it's a false boogeyman. But I think it's not about the intensity. I'm, I'm, maybe I'm not putting it. Into words. Let me let me give you my point. Let me give you the point and then let's work backwards. That would have been easier if you just started. Yeah. Well, okay. Okay. Here we go, Katie. Reboot. Restart. This is, this is why you should never debate me, FYI. Well, you just start yelling. You get angry no. so quickly. Um, I get angry when I talk to stupid people. <laughs> here's the thing. You know me. I've been doing this thing for over 15 years now. Relatively injury-free. A. 
B, for the last six months, I was training in my in my garage. Mm-hmm. And I was basically just picking and choosing whatever I wanted to do, avoiding Olympic lifts just because I didn't feel like doing them. I was just doing like longer AMRAPs. I went back to the box this for the open for 22.1 at Ralston Creek. And I was like, oh, fuck, I'm out of shape. Now, granted, even just doing low intensity CrossFit for the last six months, I still put up decent scores. Like I went RX, I finished the muscle ups. Like I wouldn't say it's anything to be embarrassed about. However, getting You're not back- a slob as much as it pains me to say that you're not a slob. Thank you. That really means a lot to me. Oh, you know? the nice, that's about as nice as I can. That's be. the nicest thing you've ever said to me. You're not a slob. But <laughs> point is, point is, I missed the community and I missed pushing myself. And even though I was training at maybe 60 to 70 percent intensity on average, because let's be honest, just moving the intensity is slowly going up. Like you're not training at 20%. Like if you show up and you're moving around and not sitting between sets, your intensity is probably at like 60 to 70% of its max, but showing up and going hard again, my scores and my weights have skyrocketed. Like I'm feeling great again. And I attribute that to showing up to the box and having other people there that push me. And I, and I think it's twofold. I did a workout, um, me, you know, most workouts I'm looking over and I, t- I, and here's the, here's the rub about it. I don't care if it's Fern, Katie, or little 80 year old Donna in the corner. I want to win. And I think that's the fun part about CrossFit with good coaching and good scaling. We're all competing. You're using PVC. I'm using 135. That dude over there is using 225. We're all in this. We're all trying to be done fast. We're all trying to be done fat, right? That's the fun competition. The other aspect of it is I did a workout this week. The dude next to me, Rick, very fit guy. We're pretty close as far as workouts go. He was on the struggle bus, as was I. And man, if he wasn't there struggling next to me, I think I would have quit that workout. Like if I were doing it in my garage. So simply seeing somebody else struggling, realizing, okay, I'm not doing terrible. Like we're neck and neck on this. Like it felt like I was resting. It felt like I was, you know, really performing. It was um, snatches and double unders. And I was like blowing up and seeing him at the end. I was like, cool. And then at the end, well, it was going uh, descending reps, nine, six, three. We both look kind of looked at each other and we're like, let's fucking go. Right. And I think that's the fun competition part that, that people think is negative. That's the best part about it. Yeah, I agree with now, you. Now, do you understand my point? You want to yell again? I do want to yell. Does it make you feel better? Yelling do you feel better when you yell like better. that? Do, 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 I, f- I would love to hook you up define, to like a, a blood pressure. I have super low blood pressure. Yeah, but I wonder how high it gets when uh, when you're angry. I mean, it definitely doesn't get as high as me suffering on that air runner out there a half hour ago. Um, <laughs> the so, But that, that's my point. Everyone that's talking negative about the competition aspect that, that everyone's doing the same thing. It's like, yeah, that's well, what we th- want. I, th- I think this is a larger conversation that like society at large is like becomes, becomes more and more averse to the idea of, of competition, which is like, no, but there can't be any losers. Right. And so just put that idea off to the side, and, but that is a real thing. We're just like, well, competition is bad. Well, no, look, the competition is not bad. Competition used maliciously is bad. Just like peer pressure used maliciously is bad. Just like intensity used terribly is bad. Just like fire used poorly is bad. And electricity used the wrong way is bad. Anything can be used in, in a good way or a bad way. I, it doesn't matter what it is. And But this idea that I, and I think it's sometimes you just have to, this kind of reminds me of the James's analogy about the, the riding a lion thing. Yeah, that's good. And, and as, as a CrossFit coach, s- to some degree, if I look at this, where is my job is kind of to bottle lightning. Well, that's kind of my job, but I kind of have ride to that take, lion. ride that lion. I have to ride the lion, but I, but I have to think of this idea. He's riding this, the lion. He's feeling the right, crew. <laughs> right, right. And I have, I have to think about this idea of, of, of CrossFit intensity, competition, peer pressure. And I have to take that lightning and I have to put it in a bottle. I have to control it. Otherwise it will run amok. But if I can get it controlled, which we can do, then what does it do? It powers the house and it gives me all the other things that I want. And it's just like, it's one of those things like people want to nitpick it apart. And it's like, if this helps 90% of the world, 
And the 10%, you're right about those 10%. They'd be stupid. They're going to hurt themselves. They need specific one-on-one, this and that. Cool. But what else is out there that truly has this much of an impact on the world? Happens to be really fun. Creates an amazing community where people are meeting other people, having friends, family, et cetera, you know, come from that. Like, there's nothing, nothing better than it. Nothing. And, and that's kind of my contention, which is, you know, that, that would this would be analogous to, you know, like, well, uh, particularly now. And, and I, this I don't find this to be in a ridiculous statement at all based on the current state of society with regard to chronic disease, obesity, general sickness, overall health and wellness. It's really bad, really, really bad. So this would be no different than saying, well, listen, uh, that guy who was, you know, trying to do the light bulb. Right. Or just or he was trying to you know run electricity house he electrocuted are himself. you referring to thomas edison are you referring just, to thomas I'm not, edison? not the light bulb specifically but like hey when we were trying to when we were trying to contain ben franklin power, you're talking about whoever whoever was that like, how do i know more about Hart. history you know whoever, what i saw hamilton i got whoever, all history whoever whoever was that kind of like learned to harness electricity not necessarily the light bulb specifically but like was learning to like like run power right <laughs> Had they electrocuted him, and they probably did at some point, and electrocuted yeah. them. Some many people died in that process. <laughs> but in the, if we'd have just said, you know what, that guy died, so uh, electricity, guys, that's off the table. We're not going to use it anymore <laughs> yeah. um, and because yeah. there because there was a downside to it. We wouldn't have this podcast, that sign, lights, AC, refrigeration, any of those things. I like how the podcast was the first thing that would go if we had no electricity. Like, oh man, it would be terrible. We wouldn't have this podcast. Like, right. Yeah. When I say this We'd podcast, I mean We'd the ability dead. to, have, I wouldn't say this. I don't, when I say that, I'm, I'm in the ability to have a conversation. Ben Franklin's flying the kite. He's like, one day, over. the best hour podcast <laughs> is going to be so good. We'll have this conversation <laughs> virtually. And, and I think it's just, I, and I think it's just some people are pessimists instead of looking at it and just saying, man, like, yeah, there's downsides to everything, like quite literally everything. And, but we, if people tend to only focus on the negative think- when there's tremendous upside to this whole thing, and this is, past what we know to be fact about the impact of increasing work capacity across broad title, broad time and mobile domains and giving people, you know, this idea of rehabilitating functional movements to avoid decrepitude. And then we layer on top of the community aspect of it and giving people a tribe and, you know, common thought and common practices in a group I mean, what downside are we talking about? Like, there is a risk for injury. Well, there's a risk for injury when I drive my daughter to school. I, the, the most risky thing I do every day is when I wake up in the middle of the night and pick Madison up out of her crib. That cold deadlift, that 20 pound cold deadlift, every day I'm like, I'm going to fuck my back up. Like, kid, you got to crawl yourself out of this thing. But I want to ask so you. So now I'm questioning the type of training you were doing for six months in your garage. <laughs> you can't pick up your. It was a lot of concept two bike sitting there on my phone. I'm going to be honest. But so a couple of things. One, this woman was at the box the other day and she said, why do we have to snatch? Like, what is this useful for? You don't, I don't have me- to. Well, A, that is my answer. Like, cool. You don't have to. You get to choose. I said, however, she's probably she looks good. So I want to say she's probably mid 50s. And I said, I said, Laura, here's the deal. If you snatch that 55 pound barbell 32 times or whatever it was, I'm far less concerned about you living independently. That's it. Like you're going to fall down and I know you're going to get back up. The person that can't do that, I'm a little more concerned about. And I think that, you know, that's it. Like what else is there that's really impacting such a large population? Right. But keeping it, that's the, that's the thing that I would, that I butt heads with the most. I'm like, you know, we've had plenty of people on here that have been combat- combative with us or we we see them out there and it's like, you're you're right, dude. Like your shit works, your shit works, your shit works. However, it works for a very small population of people that are comfortable, A, training alone without energy, without other people surround. Like you can give me, oh, if you hit this programming, you will make the CrossFit Games. Cool. I'm not doing that programming. That, that program doesn't exist. By it way. does. No it does. program is getting into the CrossFit. It's, it's, there's there's got to be something. Yeah. But the point is, as a judge, point, as a judge, yeah. <laughs> the point is, the point is, it's like cool. That's great. Uh, I'm not going to do it in my garage because I, it, I, I speak for a lot of people. Like it's hard for me to get motivated to train alone. I go to somebody, the box. Somebody might, right? And, th- th- and I don't, I don't even know that's the greatest argument. The point is, so that's like it, it's a, it doesn't matter, right? So. 
this thing over here being effective or not effective doesn't have anything to do with CrossFit being effective, right? They're not, they're not related. We're talking about two separate things. And the idea that something is effective because some, because one program is effective, that another one is ineffective. It doesn't, doesn't jive, right? Like it's, it's a, it's a, it's a re it's a very circular, horribly constructed argument, which is like both are effective. Yeah. But the end, the thing that's effective is it's, it's, it's like we, t- we talk about right in, in CrossFit. It's like the, the thing that is effective is the thing that yields the results. And you can give me the best programming in the world. If I sit on my couch, looking at the programming, the better results are going to come from showing up at the affiliate, doing one workout or doing whatever the programming is that day, but being surrounded by people. I mean, you and I, like we've, we've had the, luxury, the privilege of training with people like Rich Froning. Like we've been to his box. We've both trained with him. He shows up, you know, at least back in the day when we were training with him a little more often, like at at the old uh, mayhem, he shows up on the whiteboard. What do we want to do today? It's far less about what they're slapping on the board and far more about, hey, we're all training hard in this together and pushing the intensity. Yes, there's dumb. pro, And that's always my contention. It's like, of course, there's dumb programming. Dumb programming is more just like, over the course of time, right? On any given day, it's hard to be completely dumb. Um, and, and, and more so if you're training with other people and it's leveling you up, that's what it's all about. Yeah, well, the Mayhem Nation is a perfect example of this, which is uh, Rich and that cohort of freak shows there would not be what they are if they were all training by themselves. They wouldn't be. No. They're all fitter and continuing to get fitter because they train in a group group environment. Now we have to acknowledge that is the outer edge of the spectrum, like the very outer edge of the spectrum. Yeah. But I'm, but I'm a microcosm, to... but a microcosm of that is happening every day in the affiliate. It's just exactly. not happening to exactly. that degree. Right. But when I mean, they every day in, to me, every day to me, no lie is the CrossFit games at Ralston Creek CrossFit. I try to die to be number one on the leaderboard. Like, that's uh, that, I, and I guess that's my point. It's like it's a depressing it, life. It is. It is depressing. It's talk to you and try to win a workout over at the gym. No, I get on my phone and, and I know I'm not the only one. There's listeners that understand this. It's like and, and for the record, if I don't come in first that day, I'm never mad at the person that beat me. Like, I'm like, cool, that dude did awesome. I want to get better. I wish I did that. I shouldn't have rested. What can I have done differently? Right. But that's also what motivates like. Going back to the box, it it reminds me of 2007 again, where I'm like, refresh, refresh, refresh. What's tomorrow's workout, right? Like you remember those days. I look forward to it. I'm like, and you know, and I'm matured a little where it's like, okay, I'm smarter about, we had Nicole the other week. I didn't do Nicole. We talked about it, right? Because I was worried I could have scaled, I could not scaled it, but I could have been smart during the training. And I was like, cool, you're not going to be smart during this. You're going to try to win and you're going to give yourself rabdo. So let's just take a rest day, Right. And that, that was my point earlier. Like, I think I'm obviously a little more knowledgeable than the average person going to the box. So I'm smarter about some of these things, but like well, you said, a, so, coaches are getting better at that. And this is, this is something where this just is an acknowledgement of the idea and what a coach's responsibility is. So that, that scenario that you just presented is a real scenario and coaches need to understand that. And you need to be able to take that lightning, which is, this idea of you going full ham on a workout like Nicole and then bottling it and saying, Hey, you can do this without going full ham and it will still be beneficial. You, and you, you will, will get more benefit. You. you will get more benefit by not crushing yourself and not doing it that way and still be able to touch this button of high intensity. Because we know if you're doing full ham in Nicole there, again, there is a point where the capacity does not match the effort at which point injury would be the result. And Nicole is one of those rare workouts we talked about back in the day. People weren't giving themselves rhabdo because well, they probably were, butterfly. but not, but not for, but for different reasons is because sure. the body wasn't adapted to do that type of volume and then adapted over time, more work capacity has developed at which point the issue is now just the sheer volume because they're capable of doing it in combination with a couple of other tools like grips and chalk and all these other things. That's true. Uh, too, the yeah, butterfly yeah. kipping pull up where I can do them faster. So it was just like, oh, like to some degree, some of these tools and techniques accelerated the capacity to the point where, okay, that doesn't really make sense anymore for a large swath of athletes. But that doesn't mean it's bad. Again, for the most part, intensity 
in and of its very nature is self-regulating. It should be. And I think that's the job of the coach to edge. Like that's what I've learned over the years. You know, I, the example I posted about the other day is there was a workout with 30 pound wall balls in it. And I was like, I could do that. I can do sets of seven, maybe. So three sets of seven around my time's going to go down. I said, or I can scale. And I was frustrated because it's rare that a 30 pound wall ball is the RX. So I was like, okay, I have to scale today. So I think, you know, the value of my post that I put out there is understanding there's people that are probably frustrated. They have to scale all the time. And there's people that are probably really trying to be competitive out there. A good coach recognizes both of those and gives them both the appropriate encouragement to get them better. Like if you're scaling regularly, let's talk about that. What can we do differently? Like we, we can meet after class and talk about it. I can give you some, some nuggets to, to cling to that maybe help you get beyond that. Yeah, and I think, again, going back to like, how, how, how do you bottle the lightning? How do you do that? And I think it's just- Let's use the term, can we, I want to use ride the line. I don't like bottle the lightning as much as ride the line. How do you ride the line? Well, it's not your saying, so it doesn't matter. I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, yeah. I just, I, I'm just saying as a brand, we should go with ride the lion. We got a t-shirt coming out, ride the lion. Maybe we'll have a lightning bolt behind it. It's me on a lion, lightning bolt behind it. Who wants one? Who wants that shirt? Everybody raise your hand. Everybody, Katie. Right, got it. Katie, no, crop top, we so, have crop tops. So no. the, the whole point of this is understanding. You got a freaking bear doing a deadlift on your shirt right now, Katie. Yeah, so, yeah it's not you riding a lion. Yeah. Yeah. How much cooler would that be if you had that shirt on? Less cool. That'd be like, that'd be like one of those Space Kitty t-shirts. The <laughs> um, So I, I think... I think the idea is like, how do I do that? And, and I think some of that is understanding the forces at play here, which is like peer pressure is a thing. We shouldn't ignore it. We should acknowledge it. And we should yeah. understand, okay, do you want to compete with that person? That's fine. The, the, let's do that. But let's do it over a longer period of time, not just today. So if you want to compete with that person, maybe we need to dial it back today. Don't catch him today. This is, this is you know, when I've, when I've trained people for you know, different like spec ops programs. This is one of the things that you have to teach them because they're a types and they, and so there's different types of runs. And one of the things you have to teach them is if you're going to take off on a timed run, you have to know your capacity because if I want the outcome to be positive, if I go chase the rabbit that is going to run faster than me for the full duration of this mileage, it's not going to pan out for me. My goal is to finish the race and I'm still competing. But if I don't understand psychologically how to deal with this and psychologically how to manage that over a longer period of time than just the first hundred meters of this run or the first workout of the week or the first round of this workout, whatever it might be, this is when the outcome becomes psychologically negative to somebody. So I have to train people to do that over time. And the beauty of this is there are a lot of people that don't care, right? I find it there to be increasingly less people that fall in the competitive bucket, which I think is fantastic, by the way. There's still that, 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 that common um, push across the group where like people are pushing. They're not necessarily competing, but they are pushing. They're pushing hard. When they want to stop because somebody else is shuffling, they continue to shuffle. So they don't do that. They're not necessarily competing. Yeah. Or they don't want to be last. Right, but the collective, like, peer pressure, the collective peer pressure of saying, I'm not going to quit, I'm not going to slow down, is what gets them to the finish line. And, and lends itself to this intensity, which then lends itself to greater health over time. And when we say intensity, we're not meaning crushing yourself every day, just the idea of pushing the envelope, right? And I think just understanding that and understanding like it's not a bad thing. It's a great thing. It's the thing that gets us where we want to go. I just have to learn to control it a little bit. And you're going to lie. Yeah. You have to learn to bottle the lightning, right? So and, and I think, and I think that is, it is difficult to do and it's going to take reps and you're going to mess it up. And anybody that suggests otherwise that that's, that, uh, that there is a way to avoid that is, has never coached before and is I mean, ignorant but- and is, and is lying to your face. And I think that that is, it's an, it's an unavoidable part of the process. The same way we talk about in, in making mistakes with regard to training, coaching, learning to deal with intensity is a learned skill. Right. Like, so for instance, like I have been doing it long enough where this workout shows up yesterday and it's got, you know, uh, concept two bike, uh, ring muscle ups and handstand walks. 
And I wasn't super sure if I was going to do the full distance on the handstand walk. And I get into the first round. I'm like, I'm going to cut 20 feet off of it. And I end up in the exact same at five feet. Cause it was 25 foot handstand walk. Just... No, the, uh, I'm happy to smash you in a handstand walking <laughs> contest as well. No the... way. When we're in Nashville. Oh, I will. Done. We're going done. Triple yeah. jump, handstand walk. I'll, I'll do handstand walking. You're, you're Get gonna, out of here, Katie. You're I can walk invited. on my hands. I can walk no, on my there's hands. There's no way. You barely walk on your feet some days. There's no <laughs> way. Listen, you, just based on me knowing your overhead position, there's no way you're going to be me in handstand Are walking. you talking to me okay. or Katie? You. Yeah. 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 Katie's overhead position <laughs> is just oh, I'm fine. Gonna, oh, yours I cannot is wait. garbage. I literally can't wait. Yours, I thought yours you were talking garbage. to Katie. Like, looking no, at no. Katie, you'd be like, no, there's no chance. No, no. Fine. Go ahead. Keep underestimating me. We'll see what happens. Katie, I'm going to be honest with you. But you're an attractive woman, but you're awkward. You're awkward, girl. I never said it wasn't awkward. Doesn't mean I can't walk <laughs> on my hands. Yeah, yeah. So, but the but the point of all of that is that you learn to how to control this idea of intensity and control the peer pressure, so that I can still get the desired outcome and still compete at the same time. The idea that you can't compete while dealing with intensity is foolish. Or like I can do both at the same time. I just have to learn to, to govern it a little bit better, which is like when I finished that workout yesterday, I was four and a half rounds. I think the, the, the fastest time in that cohort of meatheads in there was five and a half. So I was only a round back over 14 minutes. Oh, I was totally happy hard. with that. I was, I was totally happy with that. And I didn't cheat myself at any fitness, by the way. Like I was like, that was a good workout. You, still, you probably got more fitness. I mean, by our definition, right? From scaling appropriately. Going and back well, to your point, I was not going to do it. Until I walked in there, like you that's getting in the, on this. That's the and biggest was, point I want to take away from I, this. I was but not going to do it, and I walked in there, and they're like, "You getting in on this?" And I'm like, "How long do I have to warm up?" And they're like, seven minutes." And I was like, "I'll warm up in the first round. It's fine." Yeah, and and I want to say a couple things about that. Um, one, let's be honest. Like once, probably once a week, I do go to the box, which I wouldn't have done anyway, and um, because I'm just like I'm tired, and I'm like, okay, I'm going to go today, and my goal isn't to be on top of the leaderboard. Right. My goal is to survive this workout. Oftentimes I still want to go hard, but I'm not as cognizant of like what the best times are. And that's mod like you've discussed many times, Fern, that's modulating my intensity. The second thing I want to say is I think we throw a challenge out to our listeners. Every box has, so I'll give an example. The, the woman Micah at our box here, she's really fit. She's like 38. She's got three kids. Her husband is Rick. The one that I was doing that workout next to great, nice couple. She was saying, everything we're talking about. And this is kind of where it came from. She's like, that's why I love this. She's like, I haven't been this competitive in 20 years, you know, or whatever, since high school, since college, she did the snatch double under work at RX. I've seen her take, you know, plenty of weight overhead. She's a strong woman and she's tiny, by the way, she's probably like five, two, five, three, but that's the, yeah, exactly. <laughs> that, that's the beauty of this thing. It's like, yeah, the people like Mike is out there and that's just one person. So my challenge is, if you own a box or you just coach at a box, find someone, keep it to under a minute and ask them questions like that. Why are you so excited to be here? What about the like, get those answers out there to your community. Of course, tag us, hashtag ride the lion. And we will, uh, we will give you the first ride the lion shirt. I'm being serious, you know, serious about this. So, cause going back to what we first said, Hey, it's on us to combat that negative stereotype of the games. This is how you do it. This is how you do it. You, you, you got to get out at the forefront, being put, put it on your social media, the Micahs, the Ricks, even the, you know, the, the people that are well, you know, way back on their beginning of their journey, showcase them why they came in and, and, and talk to people about, it. I mean, Nicole Christensen does a great job on, on the root social media, go check her out. You do a great job on the right social media, but that's the kind of content you want to be putting out there. To, to attract more people that understand that. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, we want to show people that we all, what we all already know, which is that CrossFit is, is, is something that everybody can do. Okay. And this idea that peer pressure and competition is bad and something to avoid is not true. And from a coaching standpoint, we have to learn and acquire the skills that would allow us to lean into that so that we can use that to benefit everybody that comes into our ecosystem. Because at the end of the day, that's our job. Yeah. Don't hit stop, Katie. I know you're about to hit stop on that. I know we got to run, but you've been awfully quiet. I want to hear your opinion on this. You are a level two trainer. You've been doing this CrossFit thing. Be the voice. You're the voice of the people. Fern and I were level threes, level fours, obviously. Sometimes we, we, it's hard for us to see back that far to the people of CrossFit. Like we're, we're up there. We're up there. 
are you? What do you think? Um, okay. <laughs> um, I mean, I, I agree with everything you guys said. It was a very good conversation. And I, all I keep something I keep going back to, which could be another discussion is the reason why there is the disconnect between like when people come into a CrossFit box, why they think um, you have to be at a certain level or people think you have to like, I can't do what the people on the CrossFit games do. And um, I guess the only thought I had was thinking back, like the first video footage you see of the games is like Annie Thor's daughter trying to do a ring muscle up and people who are in their twenties and thirties. So, whereas like for me, growing up watching track and gymnastics on uh, TV, but you get involved in it at a young age. And so now I think with the advent of CrossFit kids, that's going to be a huge um, that's helping because people getting like Mal O'Brien, people getting into it at a younger age. Um, so you see that it's something that you can grow into if you have goals and aspirations to going to the games, but that is not what everybody does. So I think it's just over time, can CrossFit continuing to educate people. And then that I agree completely. It comes from the coach though. When you get people in the gym and your affiliate, then it's on you to educate them as to where they are at and help guide them in whatever their goals are. I love it, Katie. You're absolutely right. You, no, sorry. That would, no, that would have been, I'm not done. Yeah, you just can't I have a question for you. Let somebody else finish the show. No, no. It's, it's I always have to have the, the it's last. All, it's about you. It's about word, you. Word. Last word. Yeah. Yeah. No, last I know. Word. Word. Last word. <laughs> no, I agree with Katie. And I do think you're going to see that evolution where people realize, okay, like any sport, like I'm not trying to pick up basketball at 43 years old, right? Like Fern played that his entire childhood. We're going to see that. My question to you, Fern, is just like CrossFit, do you think when Ben Franklin, was doing the whole light. Thomas Edison. Thing. Thomas Edison. Do you think somebody came along was like, hey, I'm going to take that thing and make it better, even though it wasn't making it better? Like, nope, it's already done. We got this electricity. See that light bulb? We already did it. Oh, no, no. My light bulb works better for these people. Do you think Do you think that's always just been part of history? I mean, I think that's the nature of, of human evolution is to try to make anything better. That's why we have LED light bulbs. Otherwise, we still have the Edison lights. Thanks for checking out this episode of the Best Hour of Their Day podcast. We appreciate you listening and choosing to have us help you in your passion for coaching and affiliate ownership. You can find more episodes just like this on all podcast platforms. If you're interested in learning more, you can reach out to us on any social media platforms or you can visit www.besthouroftheirday.com to book a call. If you found this episode helpful for you, please share it so that we can help other coaches and affiliate owners to help build a bigger and stronger CrossFit community. Thanks for listening.